So I'm a father of what? I gotta find a babysitter. I found care.com and I was blown away. Through the platform, I was able to find local and experienced candidates along with their reviews and rates, which were way more affordable than I anticipated. Care.com really put me at ease knowing that they were all required to go through a background check. If you're like me and you need to find someone reliable for your child care necessities, check out care.com. Find the ideal sitters for your child care needs. This is GoPowerCat.com publisher Tim Fitzgerald. Thank you for listening to this PowerCat podcast. Make sure you never miss an episode of the PowerCat podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast network. And if you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a subscriber to GoPowerCat.com. We cover the Wildcats like no one else with our VIP customers enjoying one-of-a-kind coverage from our team of professional journalists. And sign up today for an annual subscription to GPC and grab a 30% discount on your first year. And now here's the PowerCat Podcast. The following is a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's Tannehill and Spiller PowerCat podcast. Presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor, and it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC gig-powered studios. Here are your hosts, former K-State tight end Travis Tannehill and former Wildcat safety Monte Spiller. Welcome to the Tannehill and Spiller podcast. First episode ever for us, so we'll dive right in and get started. Got uh, myself, Travis Tannehill, and Monty Spiller. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's uh, everyone hanging in there? About midweek now from a from a rough loss on Saturday. Yes, yeah, you know, I, I was talking to you beforehand. You know, I was fortunate enough to make it down to Stillwater. Great atmosphere. I felt pretty confident going into the game um, after we uh, had a week off to prepare. You know, it's one of those things where you feel like, all right, here we go. Let's see what Coach is going to do on the road, Big 12 opener, and let's get ready to roll. First off, how how was that atmosphere? Was that a good atmosphere? It, it was. It was a good atmosphere. A lot of purple. A lot of purple. The uh, Okie State fans were really accommodating. You know, I think they have a respect, a mutual respect for us as we do for uh, them. And, you know, everybody was a good good spirits. You know, it wasn't too hot. It was pretty nice outside weather-wise. And it was good to see a bunch of familiar faces from Manhattan and the Kansas area. But, you know, Stillwater's a cooler town. Yeah, I'd agree. That's one of the places that I haven't. I've played there, but never right. never been there as a fan, and uh, it's on my list. We almost made it this year, but just couldn't quite uh, couldn't quite pull the put all the cards together to to make the trip down there. So right. maybe uh, maybe in a couple more years we'll yeah. see. <laughs> you know, it's always funny on uh, something. I don't know if it's Stillwater or K State, but I've been uh, involved with a couple of trips to Stillwater with. Uh, inclement weather. I remember some years back they had an earthquake there after. Oh yeah, I was I, I was played in that so, game. I was I was a fan. <laughs> Tell the age difference, but I was there watching you guys play, and they had the earthquake. And then this year we had the weather delay. You know there wasn't any forecasted, but I look up in the sky and I'm like, holy cow! Uh, that cow, that cloud looked pretty serious, and sure enough, it rolled on in. Yeah, that uh, I thought that was going to be Kansas State's saving grace kind of let them let them get recharged and all right let's put that put that quarter and a half behind us and and come out and play so I guess we'll kind of back up a little bit what the heck happened I mean we we talked last week yeah, and we yeah. were all I mean I was up everyone was up fan yeah. base was up seemed like coaches were positive players we were talking to them they were positive yeah I mean what the heck happened what went wrong what <laughs> just what happened Man, it's college football you know unpredictable you know some of the bright spots I, I looked at, you know, defensive-wise, if you, if you look back the first quarter, um, they were on the field quite a bit. And I think they limited Oklahoma State to three field goals, maybe two field goals the first two drive. And if you can slow down a high-tempo offense like that and limit them to two field goals at home with a, a rowdy crowd, that was impressive. And, you know, I was just waiting for the offense to get that one spark, and, and it, didn't, it didn't come. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I mean, I think that. Overall, I think the defense played pretty well. I mean, like you said, they were on the field all day long. 
Oklahoma State's a high-powered offense. I know yeah. we gave up a ton of yards, oh. but I mean, we heard Coach Kleiman say coming out of the half on the on the TV broadcast that he was very thrilled with his defense, only letting up 16 points right. in that first half, and then only 10 in the second half. So, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at the the big picture from a defensive standpoint, you got to be relatively happy. Yeah. It's just now, offense yeah, struggle. I, I know, and it, and it. I was shocked to be honest with you because the O-line and we spoke about before the first three games they just showed total dominance and confidence and able to move people around and it's not like you know we we played a average team two weeks prior in Mississippi State they got some quality athletes and you think playing a team like Mississippi State would prepare you for a Big 12 opponent and Oklahoma State give them credit they came out and played they did yeah Yeah. they came out and played I think that was probably the best game they've played this year um and two, I, I rewatched the game this morning, and man, it was like every offensive snap. And I, offensive guy, I watch more offense than right. defense. Defense doesn't really matter to me. So, but the, I was watching the, uh, like the first drive, second drive, third, you know, just waiting for something to get going. And every single one was like, man, one missed block. Yeah. You know, oh, that guy just made a really good play. Everything was just so close to yeah. putting, you know, two, three, four plays together. And, you know, they kind of got behind the sticks initially on first down a lot in that, in that first half. And so it was. It wasn't the worst offensive performance I've ever seen. The scoreboard looks terrible. The scoreboard did not yeah. look good. But yeah. when you broke down the film, it wasn't terrible. Right. But it sure wasn't good. No. And one thing I noticed as a former player, uh, you know, and being a current coach at the high school level, um, and the, the average fan couldn't see from the television broadcast being there in person, Oklahoma State, they had a check for every formation we gave yeah whenever we audible and something they had a check and they were lining up to it like right away so i'm not sure what they saw on film uh what insight they had but they were very well prepared for every formation we threw at them and they checked into it right away and i noticed that from the start i was very impressed the way they they, they made uh, adjustments yeah they seemed they seemed very ready just from an alignment standpoint pre-snap on the defensive side of the ball and which is weird because K-State hasn't had yeah. any issues up to this point. And then K-State gets a two-week bye week, right. and they're burning two timeouts early in the first half. Yep. And they're doing things that are uncharacteristic. They look like they haven't been practicing the last two weeks, which we know we ha- we know they have. Yeah. So it's just I, – I know I, I go back to – and I hate to even bring it up, but the, to the, <laughs> the 2012 Baylor game yeah. where, where we play Baylor and, I mean, literally – Nothing works. Like yeah. every single play we're calling, and our OCs are calling. Like you get, you go. I make my block. I like. All right, I won. Two yard loss. Yeah. Do I do that for like seventy snaps? And it's really frustrating. It's like, yeah. well, I'm going to grade out at like a ninety eight. Like yeah. I missed one block today. Right. And, and and you 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 get back to the huddle and you're like, did you make you make you make your block? Yeah. You make your block. Yeah. It's like sometimes they just got the right defense called, and that's what it seemed like. Yeah. So from from your side of the ball, what's How's that feel? It's super frustrating on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. How's that feel when that defense is just clicking and that defense is just on point and the play calls are right? You know, right. it's not luck, but it's a little bit of being in the right play call it is. on the defensive side. So how's that feel? Obviously, great, but kind of break that down for us. Well, yeah, it's one of those situations where, as a, as a DC, um, was a player and as a DC, uh, you see certain things, and when you practice it, and it. Uh, and it shows up during the game, that's the one of the best feelings in the world. And I know for a fact that Oklahoma State, they were willing to take more risk because the things that they did early worked, and we didn't have an answer for it. And they continued to bring pressure. And I think Schuyler, he was on the run a large amount of the game. And a lot of times some guys were open. And it's easier said than done being a boss and say, hey, why didn't you see that guy? But when you got a 300-pound D lineman chasing you, it's not that <laughs> easy. But as a defense, Oklahoma State, give them credit, they were well prepared. And, uh, and you know, moving forward to Baylor, I think K-State will make adjustments. Um, it was a learning experience on the road in the Big 12. Uh, there's no room for panic. Um, you know, we're fine. We're going to be okay. But they that Saturday they were just better. They were just better. Yeah, no, I definitely, definitely agree. And that's kind of the one. I think, I think this coaching staff is is more than qualified, but I think they haven't been in a situation where I don't want to say the least, the lesser talented team, but you know, Oklahoma State case are very compar- comparable. So yeah. they they needed. I know we we heard Coach Kleiman say. 
or in the offseason that we're not going to do the quarterback run game. K-State's not going to do the quarterback run. We're going to be able to run it down people's throats without the quarterback. It's like, right. well, that's easy at North Dakota State because yeah. you're usually better than everyone else. True. But sometimes, you know, depending on certain years and certain matchups, it's like they might have a better D line than our offensive lineman. And so I, I'd be curious to see how that staff adapts because – Oklahoma State, probably pretty evenly matched from a talent standpoint. I agree. You go down to OU, I mean, we're outmatched. No, no, no question, no doubt. You go down to Texas, doesn't mean it's not winnable, but man for man, we're outmatched. Yeah. And so how can this staff overcome that disparity when that's what the former regime was the best in the country at, yeah, was overcoming that? So it'll be, I'll be just – Keep that in the back of your mind and watch because that was I think that was probably the first time in those coaching staff's careers were – and maybe not career, but where they were a little outmatched. Yeah, and re- there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, in recent times, kind of like you said, you know, coming from uh, NDSU, they are they dominate. And, and, yeah. and, and good for them. They, they deserve to win because they prepare uh, impeccable. And, and it's one of those situations where Saturday was a challenge, uh, probably mentally, emotionally. And, and the, I think the biggest coaching job they're going to have this week – is not preparing for Baylor, but just keeping the trust and the focus of the kids. And I think the kids, you know, when I say kids, the young men, we have enough senior leadership, we have enough guys that are veterans that's going to step up and say, you know what, it's one loss. And looking at the bright side, hey, you'd rather lose early to a quality team on the road that's going to beat a lot of other good teams in the Big 12 this year and move forward. You know, it lines up pretty well for us. You know, Baylor's a good team. They're coming in 4-0. You know, I'm not knocking Baylor, but the competition hadn't been anybody stellar. Right. Um, you know, Iowa State was a big win for him. You know, yep. and it's one of those situations. Iowa State is not what we thought they would be, but they're still Iowa State, and they yeah, can be, they're man, still, they, they still play tough football. Exactly, up there. exactly. But I think winning against Baylor can change everybody's uh, state of mind from Saturday, and you have to move on anyway. But I'm excited to see what Coach Kleiman and the staff is going to do to kind of get past uh, Okie State and moving forward, looking forward to Saturday. Yeah, I'll be curious, too. I mean, the tone seems like it's still been a very positive message to the players. We still got your back. We still believe in you. And I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I sent out a tweet Saturday night, and I was like, <laughs> Coach Kleiman, you need to rip their fannies. Right. Like, sometimes a little – a little fire under him can can do a little bit too. So right. I mean, I'm gonna let Coach do his thing. He's yeah. he's a smarter man than me. But I know I was motivated. Some guys are motivated by by different ways, and you know, there's a time to there's a time to love them, and there's a time to light a fire under them. And yeah. the good players know that if you're ripping their face off, that, that that's true love. I yeah. mean, that's that's knowing you're not doing a good enough job as I think you're capable of. So, and the and the you know the great ones don't take it personal. Yeah, exactly. And, and you can't. And it's kind of funny. I was today. I was on social media, and um, somebody tweeted about the new uniforms. Well, the the, the revealing of the the white helmets and the the white. So excited! I know, right? And I, I kind of chuckle. And um, I was leaving football practice, and and I laughed. I said, you know. Those guys are lucky. We would we would never get that <laughs> when no, I was no. playing, <laughs> especially after a loss. Yeah, uh, you know if you uh, how dare you go to Coach Snyder and ask to wear white helmets and white pants after a loss. Yeah, and, you know, and that's just a different coaching style. And I think Coach Kleiman, he's the guy. You know, we lost, but I'm going to continue to be who I am. I'm going to stay true to who I am. My coaching staff is going to stay true to who we are, and I think the kids appreciate it. And I saw a video of the unveiling, and the kids loved it. You yeah. know, and that's just cool. I think it's cool. Yeah, and I'm sure that's been on the calendar for for weeks and weeks or months and months and and yeah that's a that's a trait that you see some of the great coaches have is that it doesn't matter if we win or lose we're gonna keep doing what we always do yep and trust the process trust the system trust your guys and and if that coach is doing what he believes in then then that's going to result in wins and so that's truly what when coaches get in trouble which one loss in his whole career here. Like we're we're nowhere near Coach Kleiman in, in trouble, uh, or this team in trouble. So, uh, but when coaches do get in trouble, it's they start panicking and they start changing things up and they start trying to be something they're not. The true consistency, and I think he was almost like he was probably excited to get these jerseys out to these guys because that that truly will put that Oklahoma State loss behind them. Like yeah. get them get them up again, get them excited again. Which, on the record. The jerseys are awesome. So, yeah. I mean, we, we when we played, when I played, I mean, we got 
purple gloves one game, and we went insane. Yeah, exactly. It was I was like, yeah, we got the purple gloves instead of the instead of the gray gloves. Yeah, and yeah. that was like the coolest thing we ever got. Right. And so, I mean, I just now I just can't wait. Yeah. I mean, white helmet, white jersey, white pants, yeah, away gonna, game. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, gonna be nice. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I'm like you, you know, back way before you play. Back when I played, we got excited, um, and it was funny because go take dating myself. We had white turf shoes, and then we had black rain shoes. So whenever we would, uh, if it had a little bit of a rain, the rain, the Nike rain shoes were, were black. So we were, we would hope for rain so we could wear different color shoes. <laughs> and, and that was just a little thing for us. And it's, it's funny how things change. And I'm glad that the young guys get the opportunity to have cool things. Cause I, as a, as a fan now and a former player, I love seeing the white helmets. I love seeing all the cool accessories they have, um, with the video. So it's, it's a good time. I'm having a blast with it. Yeah, they did a uh, Al Serby shout out to equipment manager. They did a nice job and that whole equipment staff. Do uh, those guys work hard? So they, they shoot. They, they work just as hard as anyone in that building. Right. So uh, Baylor game. Jumping forward to that. Where you first off going to the game? Watching from the house. Where, where will you be at? I'll, I'll be there. Um, pr- projected rain, but I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. They were calling. I mean, I'm hoping. Yeah, I, I'm I, hoping. Yeah. Man, there's nothing worse than rain. You know, I tell you what, Manhattan, we've gotten. I'm curious to find out how much rain we've gotten in the last seven or eight months. Shoot, it's yeah, it's it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's Manhattan, and it is what it is. And I think the fans still will show up and be ready to roll after the loss. And I'm I'm hoping they will. And, and knowing oh, open fans, opening day of conference yeah, play at home, better, they better be yeah, there. They better show up. Game, they got to get ready. Yeah, to roll, two thirty so. game. We'll be. Uh, I I went to. We were in Kansas City over the weekend. Bought two twenty five pound. Or pulled porks from nice. from Costco, so we'll be throwing those on the smoker on Friday. And where, and where will this be again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shoot, I, I, I got a east side somewhere it's parking all good. spot. It's all good. Shoot, I'll shoot you a text. Right but, on. Um, I mean, how are we feeling about Baylor? I know, you know, watching a little bit of Baylor, they are very talented. They got some speed, but and. And not to underestimate them, but I don't think the physicality is there. They, they got a lot of smoke and mirrors, want to get you moving in one direction, come back something different. I think Baylor will be a good test for us uh, defense-wise because they have a lot of speed, like I said before. But on the defensive side of the ball, they don't do a great job of stopping physical runners. But I think we'll be okay. You know, the, the motivation to be there, I think our running back O-line, they took a kind of punch in the face and, the, having a pride that I know they have, I think our line is going to take a personal, and and they're going to want to make a statement. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, going. I mean, they were covering guys up, but they weren't getting much push, mm-hmm. and and that's what it takes. And yeah, I, I agree. I think what, what was the line like three or something? I mean, it was a close line. Yeah, with the with K State slightly favored, I believe. So it'll be a I think it'll be a tough tough drawn out game, but yeah. I, I I truly think the boys are excited to come home. Right. They're excited about the new unis. Yeah. They're excited. I mean, you can tell that chemistry between that team is as tight as it's been in years. It is. And and you don't – I mean, you played in games. You got embarrassed. I played in games. Yeah, I got embarrassed. We all do. And so – and, I, I mean, I, I'm trying to think who – who was it? My my sophomore year, we lost to someone. I, no, I think we lost to – it wouldn't have been Baylor. We lost to someone. Then we come out and beat a really good Texas A&M team, right. like 56-3 to three or something. Yeah. yeah. And it's like – it's just football so weird. It but is. that's why you play the game. It is. So, yeah, I think it'll be a fun atmosphere. Hopefully no rain. We're, we're, it's raining on the weekends. Rain on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, it's – and I'm hoping the rain, you never know. It may not even show. And if it does, it is what it is. But I'll be pumped up. I think um, Coach Klein is going to be pumped up, get the music going, get the kids going with the new unis. Uh, it should be a, a good day for Manhattan. It should be a good day for K-State football, K-State athletics. I'm looking forward to the guys just getting back on the field, getting rid of this loss, and moving forward. It's a lot of good football ahead of us. No, nah, definitely agree. I'm excited. I was – man, I'm just so sad. I mean – can you imagine being 4 0 coming home? Oh, God. Oh. Trust me, I had a lot of time to think about it. My, yeah. my, me and my younger son, correction, me and my older son went down, and uh, with the rain delay, we got done a little bit later. So we were going to stay the night, and I said, you know what? I'm coming home. I don't want to stay the night in Oklahoma. So I <laughs> <laughs> drove all night. I drove, got Depressed. home, pulled up in Manhattan about 3 15 a.m., and I'm looking around thinking, man, you know. God, so close, you know. But and, and and I try not to look at the media too much, and and talk about the loss. But it's one of those things you have to and get past it. But we had opportunities late. Still, we did. We still yeah, had opportunities. No. And and that's the shoot. That's the one thing I noticed. I mean, I used to, I used to be pretty 
I don't want to say casual. Like, I always loved the cats, but. Like, I could watch it with people, and, like, now, like, right. <laughs> first three games of the year, like, I watched alone. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't, m- my wife, don't talk to me. Yeah. Like, I, I want this game on by myself. I'm going to yell at the TV. I'm going to check Twitter and get angry at it. Right, right. So, this last game, we were we were on the road and, and with some people, so I had to, like, be on my best behavior. <laughs> uh, uh, it was uh, terrible. Uh, I was, like, all these angry emotions. Yeah. And, you know, more angry emotions in this last game than the rest of the season combined. Right. So, it's, uh, oh, but. This Saturday we'll be we'll be back at the bill. Yep. In the stands, cheering loud, helping that team win, getting third down stops. Yes. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. But uh we're gonna hop on the phone here with good old Jesse Ertz. Jesse. Coming just around the corner. The Tannehill and Spiller Power Cat Podcast is sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. The fridge is your source for all of your tailgate and party needs. Getting the crew together isn't as easy as it used to be. We get it. Life comes at you fast. But trust us, your pals are desperate for a good hang. And when they hear you stock the party with drinks from Drizzly, they'll be banging down your door. Let Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery, take care of the supplies. All you need is an excuse. It doesn't even have to be a good one. It's your dog's birthday. The loquats are finally ripe. Whatever. With Drizzly, you can compare prices on a massive selection of beer, wine, and spirits and get them delivered straight to your door, which means you can entice the crew to leave their houses without ever leaving yours. Whatever the occasion, download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Listen up, I won't sugarcoat it. This is the longest cold flu and allergy season we've ever seen, but we're not alone. We've got Instacart. Sure, you may be a coughing snot faucet who just wants mommy, but you're not giving up! Not when cold medicine, fragrant herbal teas, and honey shaped like bears can be delivered through Instacart in as fast as 30 minutes! Now let's go win the sick playoffs! Daddy, I just want my soup. Oh, sorry, Sport App says it'll be here in in a few minutes. (laughs) Instacart for the win. And now we return to the Tannehill and Spiller Power Cat Podcast, sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. All right, got Jesse Ertz on the phone here. First off, Jesse, how you been? Doing all right? I'm doing good, man. Nothing uh, nothing too crazy in life these days, but I'm doing well. Appreciate it. Fun, fun. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us today. Talk a little bit of cats, a little bit of past cats, future cats, a little bit of what you're up to, so we like to... Bring a former guy on the show. See how you been. First off, were you uh, did you get to catch the game on Saturday? Yeah, I did absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I usually get a get together with some old past cats actually, and uh, have a little watch party. So it was a good time. Nice, fun, fun. Any thoughts on that uh, on that game? You know, obviously pretty disappointing for uh, all of us, but more so, of course, the players. Um, you know, uh, everybody's getting pretty excited, uh, and I think there's a lot to be excited about. But um, you know, I think at some point we're going to lose. Like that's just, you know, that's just the way it is for any team. So uh, nothing to be completely turning the ship around on or anything like that. But um, you know, I think it's a good learning lesson that um, you know we're not invincible yet. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, I asked this question to Monty earlier on the show, and I kind of wanted to get your. Uh, your thoughts as well. And I know I've been a part of these games where just the plays that are getting called and the execution that's happening, like literally none of your receivers are open. None of the running plays are, are working. How do you handle that as, as a quarterback when it just seems like they got the perfect defense called for whatever offensive play you're calling? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's times where it's literally, you know, if I'm a fan or even now when I watch TV, um, you know, the game, you, you can see, you know, the offensive line, defense line, linebackers, quarterback, but you can't see what's going on downfield. And, and even more so, it gets really complex when you talk about blocking schemes and run plays. So um, there's no doubt, you know, you get in those situations and it's a chess match. It's, uh, it seems like everything you run, whether or not they purposely were in the perfect thing for it, but sometimes you just keep uh, calling the wrong plays and uh, you get tricked and, uh, you run things into a bad, not ideal look for the player calling, and really all you can do is continue to uh, assume the next play is going to be the one that pops. Or, you know, 
Um, and that's, as a quarterback especially, you're always trying to, to keep that uh, mindset throughout the entire offense, especially that your next play, that this is the play, you know, this is the drive. Okay, you know, we're good. We're good. You know, it's, it's constantly trying to keep the, you know, the team even keeled, um, no high, no low. Um, you know, it's it's uh, part quarterback, part, uh, I don't know, psychologist or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Right on. Hey, uh, Jesse, Monty Spiller here. Quick question. I, you know, it's one of those things, being a former player myself and along here with Trav, uh, what do you miss most about being here in Manhattan and being part of the K-State football program? Yeah, absolutely. I, there's a lot of things. Um, you know, obviously, teammates being a big thing, everyday life of, um, of that being your life. You know, you, you, you're, you just go and um, work out and work out and go to class and then work out and then practice and everything is just geared around one thing. Um, you know, you're, you're constantly with your friends. Uh, you know, that's the biggest thing right out of college that you experience is, um, you know, you go from having 100 friends with you every day to, you know, you're, you're slim picking. So, <laughs> uh, that's definitely a, a big part of it would be uh, just missing being with friends and stuff. But, I mean, I loved every part of it. I loved practice. I love, um, you know, the, the hard workouts. Right. Um, you know, I, I I got really beat up playing quarterback. <laughs> yeah. That's no secret. But, man, regardless of if it was, you know, I, it wasn't ideal. Um, you know, I was never trying to get injured. I was try, never trying to run dumb. But, um, you know, just being in those battles and, and uh, you know, mixing it up, you know, um, just getting tackled, just playing football, like that. that's, that's something, you know, I definitely – it still doesn't feel like it's over. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime now, I'm going to have, you know, that back in my life. So. Right, right. Well, I, I appreciate your efforts uh, when you were here with the Cats, and I enjoyed watching you play and, and so forth. So well, I want to know, what do you think about the new era of K-State football, Coach Kleiman and his staff and, and some of the changes they've made? You know, what are you thinking about it? <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, there's so many different variables and um, – you know, there's always going to be people picking sides and, um, you know, for good and bad reasons, we definitely have certain opinions. Um, and I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, you got to be optimistic um, no matter what was going to happen. Uh, personally, you know, I think uh, it's an exciting time. I think, um, you know, you asked about the game, and obviously we just lost, and we just came off of three wins, and everyone's starting to think, great things myself especially you know i have no idea what the feeling for the team is going to be you know um i really like the 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 intelligence of the staff and the actual abilities of the staff to, to improve the players and put them in the right position to win all that stuff i think is awesome um but it's the fourth i mean it's the fourth game in this guy's you know tenure at k-state and and it is a team that that you know won five games last year and they've improved that i mean tons light years ahead i mean we can all agree with that but um you know it's, it's way too soon to, to to define you know what how this is going to turn out you know we're all learning together as, as it's happened every game but um very exciting i really like the hire i think the guy's a winner and more than anything um i mean it's just so obvious how inspired the team is and how uh it's just a, a really good energy everybody wants to be there everybody's loving it um, you know, everybody wants to play for him. You can't pass for much more than that. Yeah, I no, definitely agree with everything you said there. What, um, first off, have you been to a game yet this year? Been to a game? Yeah, this year? Uh, yes, I went to the first game. Nice. Gotcha, gotcha. Sounds yeah. good. You coming this weekend? Uh, I won't be there this weekend. You will not. All right. Well, you got Monty and I's numbers now, so make sure to hit us up. We got 50 pounds of pulled pork on the smoker this weekend. <laughs> so now that we're uh, – I don't know about you, but I always – like for just one game during my college career, I wanted to like not play and just go tailgate. And so <laughs> – or like just go tailgate and then show up at, at kickoff. But obviously that that's uh, totally unrealistic. So now we just get to tailgate and it's a blast. Uh, but, hey, back to um, – Kind of personal life. Where, first off, where, where are you at? What are you doing? Where are you working? Kind of give us the uh, give us the little two thousand twenty thousand foot view on uh, what Jess Yertz is up to these days. So today, 
in my life, I, I live in Oakland Park, uh, Kansas City area. What? What? Nice. That's where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. No, I love it. I, I really do like it. It's a, a really nice area. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of great food. A lot of you know a little bit more going on in Manhattan, but you know definitely uh, miss Manhattan as well. But um, I work for a company called Titan Surgical Group. Um, we're a distributorship for Arthrex. It's basically um, um, basically a medical sales medical device sales for orthopedic surgery so um i go to surgery pretty much just all i do is go to surgery um standing on surgeries and uh, you know trying to act like i know what i'm doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well thankfully you're on the you spent a few too many hours on the table in college of the surgery center so now, now you're standing at the table uh that, that's probably much uh much better to be on that side of the the surgery <laughs> Yeah, without a doubt. I've actually got uh, my own company's products um, in my shoulder and my knees. Oh, that's pretty I, cool. I, I, Talk about a selling point. Yeah, right. I can I can vouch. I can vouch. So that's good. But uh, after that, um, I also, I've been doing some quarterback training in middle school, high school kids, and even um, the kids that I started with in high school is now uh, in college. So I do um, some work with, with guys just working on fundamentals and kind of trying to we're building blocks from, you know, just getting the right habits with their position of their feet and their arm mechanics and then kind of teaching, you know, coverages and stuff, you know, at the, at the right pace for them and, and, you know, the level they're at. So that's been a really good time getting my football fixed in as well. Right on, right on. So you say you're in uh, Overland Park, KC area. I'm kind of curious, you know, I know a lot of former players come from that area and, and kind of move and relocate to KC and Overland Park, which I, I visit it often. I, I never lived there, but I visit often. You know, I couldn't help but notice Sunday, uh, a former cat, Byron Pringle. Uh, he had a great game. What's the feel like, you know, I guess what's the vibe in KC about the Chiefs and about, well, more so Brian, uh, Byron, and the, the catch he made Sunday against Detroit. You know, what's the feel about Byron in, in KC? Yeah. Yeah, so it's funny because uh, a lot of people I work with and, and whatnot that um, I've met since I moved here, they all um, – know that I know Byron and Byron's own team and they're all everybody here obviously is one hundred percent Chiefs game Sunday is <laughs> the number one for I mean you get to about Friday and it's kinda of already about the Chiefs but um yeah it's definitely a very fun environment. Um I, I still have not been to a game. I did work out with the Chiefs post career and uh been in the facilities, all that, never been to a game. Never been to an NFL game at all. So I wow. need to get to a game pretty bad. Um but as far as Byron obviously Incredibly happy for him. You know, right. he he actually got uh, released in it for about five days and then put back on action. I don't really know. There's always some, you know, more to it than just you know, guy gets cut. You know, right. You know, it's with the moving people around. But um, you know, to see him uh, get a couple catches, especially one on the game-winning drive. You know, and he, I mean, he took a couple to the chest, drug forward, and you know, put him down the three-yard line. That's pretty awesome to see. Uh, so I was really happy for him. Hopefully. Um, you know, I keep making plays, keep getting to see more of them. But. Yeah, that was awesome. I know I was uh, I was in Kansas City actually. I was in Kansas City this weekend watching that game. But don't don't look at ticket prices for those Chiefs games, man. <laughs> yeah. Me and my wife were going to go. It was going to be like a seven hundred dollar day. Oh, I was like, yeah. man, alive! I could go the whole season of K State games for seven hundred bucks. Right. <laughs> and but yeah, it's uh, they're fun. I used to go as kids growing up. They were they were a blast. But now that they got good, man, those ticket prices have skyrocketed. So. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, we'll let you go. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Definitely uh, hit me or Monty up next time you're in uh, you're in Manhattan with us for a game day, uh, or just uh, on a weekday or basketball season or whatever. We'll be here and right. we'll be holding down the fort and uh, take you out for a burger and a beer or something. So appreciate it, Jesse. I'm all in. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you. All right. Good talking to you. All right. That's gonna do it for us. The Tannehill and Spiller podcast. First ever annual inaugural. Inaugural? Is that's what the uh, well, what it would it, be defined? Yeah. Is it? I'm not, well, I want to say first annual. My wife and I always get into an argument about that. <laughs> she goes, how can it be a first annual if it never happened prior? True. Well, this definitely is an annual because we're going to do this a lot more than annually. <laughs> yes, we will yes. be doing these uh, weekly. <laughs> yes. During uh, Now that conference play has kicked off, we'll be starting these. So feel free to join in and get Monty and I's opinion and all sorts of fun stuff about the cats. See you next time. 
You've been listening to the Tannehill and Spiller Power Cat Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Power Cat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.